since the late 19th century, New York has been home to some of the world's highest buildings. Around that time, city architects realized they needed to concentrate on building up rather than out. The spectacular skyline of New York is now one of the city's defining features. It was one of the first cities in the world to adopt this architectural style, and it continues to dominate the list of the world's tallest buildings. For today's video, we'll talk about the top 10 tallest buildings in New York as of 2022. But before that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be updated whenever we post new videos. Now, get ready to be amazed by these skyscrapers. Number 10. The Brooklyn Tower at 1,066 feet The Brooklyn Tower at 93 stories and over 1,000 feet in height is Brooklyn's first super tall skyscraper. The skyscraper is a remarkable architectural achievement and a new icon for the borough, anchoring a vibrant residential district in downtown Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Tower is a unique residential super tall building in that it offers more than just multi-million dollar residences. There are also 400 rentals, with 30% of them designated as affordable housing through the New York Housing Program. Its facade, in addition to its height, stands out with floor-to-ceiling windows, bands of gleaming bronze and deep black metal, and an overall angular form that evokes neo-art deco. Gotchout Studios designed the home interiors to reflect the building's inherent elegance in the finishes. Number 9. 3 World Trade Center at 1,079 feet Nearly 10 million square feet of rentable office space is available at the World Trade Center. This was nearly three Disneyland parks in size and it held around 430 companies from 28 different nations in 2001. The World Trade Center's designers conducted extensive research into the effects of wind on the towers, commissioning one of the world's first wind tunnel studies for a skyscraper and administering perceptual tests disguised as eye exams on unwitting subjects to determine how much the building could sway in high winds without people noticing. Engineers put over 10,000 viscoelastic dampers throughout each tower to lessen the wind's impacts. These dampers are constructed of a vicious but still flexible combination of metal, epoxy, and polyacrylic glue. The towers were built to swing up to 3 feet in any direction on a windy day thanks to this cutting-edge stress-absorbing mechanism. Number 8. Bank of America Tower at 1200 feet Cook and Fox Architects designed the Bank of America Tower at One Bryant Park in Midtown, New York which is the first commercial high-rise to obtain LEED Platinum certification. The Bank of America stated a desire to build a new iconographic headquarters in New York City as early as the 1990s. Not only did the bank want to establish a visual presence in Midtown Manhattan, but it also wanted to ensure employee loyalty by providing first-class working conditions. To do this, the architects redefined the skyscraper by focusing on ways to improve sunlight fresh air, and outdoor connection which are evident in the interiors of the building. Moreover, the structure stands out against the neighboring developments because of its crystalline appearance. It has a strong recognition value, and its corners are spread slightly inwards over the top two-thirds of its height. Its volume appears lighter and more dynamic. Number 7. Empire State Building at 1250 Feet the Empire State structure is a 102-story steel-framed skyscraper in New York City that was built in 1931 and was the world's tallest building until 1971. The Empire State Building skeleton was erected at a record pace of four and a half stories each week, so rapidly that the first 30 stories were completed before critical elements of the ground level were approved. Unfortunately, Although the Empire State Building was completed ahead of schedule and on a budget, it came at a deadly cost. At least five people died during the construction process. Number 6. 30 Hudson Yards at 1,268 feet 30 Hudson Yards is a massive skyscraper on Manhattan's west side in the city's Hudson Yards area. 30th Street on the south and 43rd Street on the north define this neighborhood. 
This neighborhood is close to Chelsea's famed Hell's Kitchen district, which was originally a poor region populated by Irish immigrants. Moreover, this region has been developed into a stylish neighborhood, particularly popular with the LGBTQ population since the 1980s. The Shed, 14 acres of public open space, a 750-seat public school, the inaugural Equinox Hotel with 212 rooms, and a first-of-its-kind microgrid and cogeneration plant are all part of the Hudson Yards. This building clearly exemplifies a superficial understanding of architecture as premium branding. Each structure serves a self-promotional logo. Number 5. 432 Park Avenue at 1396 feet. This is a residential skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan, located at 57th Street and Park Avenue and overlooking Central Park. Raphael Violi designed the tower, a prominent Uruguayan architect who has designed various structures all over the world, while Deborah Burke designed the interiors. 432 Park Avenue costs $1.25 billion to construct. The project began in September 2011 and was completed in 2016. Big thanks to CIM Group and Maxwell Properties for constructing the tower. Furthermore, one of the most fascinating aspects of 432 Park Avenue is that it employs a unique technical method to lessen the tower's wind load. Every 12 stories, there are five two-story portions built inside the tower specifically for this function and which are not occupied by inhabitants. Number 4. One Vanderbilt at 1,401 feet One Vanderbilt is the fourth highest building in New York City. It's 1,401 feet above the earth in midtown Manhattan. The structure is so tall that Mayor Bill de Blasio had to rezone portions of Vanderbilt Avenue to make it possible. The 1.7 million square foot edifice dwarfs the Chrysler Building by approximately 400 feet and is the newest addition to the Manhattan skyline. Yet, it did not dethrone One World Trade Center as the city's tallest building. For various reasons, the observation deck of One Vanderbilt is unlike in any other New York. It contains glass boxes called Levitation that produce from the building and from which you can look down vertically, similar to the sky deck in Chicago. A view like this can only be found at the Edge Hudson Yards. Furthermore, from Central Park and the Chrysler Building to the Empire State Building, Hudson Yards and the Lower Manhattan Skyline, the location is ideal for seeing all of the important landmarks and attractions. Are you brave enough to visit this observation deck? Another fact about this structure is that, when the plans for the tower were disclosed, Andrew Pearson, the founder of Midtown TDR Ventures, and the owner of the land under Grand Central Terminal threatened to sue SL Green Realty for over $1 billion in air rights. Conclusively, the lawsuit was abandoned after the competing real estate company provided a settlement in the form of an undisclosed sum. Number 3. 111 West 57th Street at 1,428 feet. With a wind to height ratio of about 1 is to 24, Steinway Tower will be the world's most thin skyscraper when it is finished. The tower will be built on a base that is 60 feet wide, making it the world's thinnest tower. The tower rises straight up on its park facing side, but the south end gradually slopes back in a sequence of steps reducing the north-south dimension and resulting in a very streamlined structure. The construction will have no depth at the top, and the crown of the building will be a glass wall. Billionaire's Row, where 111 West 57th Street is located, is named after the super-rich investors who are driving the construction of residential towers along 57th and surrounding streets. The building has 82 stories. The first five floors will have common entertainment facilities and high-end stores, while the upper 77 floors will be home to premium apartments. Number 2. Central Park Tower at 1,550 feet The tower is also known as the Nordstrom Skyscraper, after the American Luxury Department Store, which has committed to opening the first store in the tower's base. The building is located on 57th Street in Midtown Manhattan, along Billionaire's Row. The Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, the Rockefeller Center are among the other well-known structures in Midtown Manhattan. Furthermore, the bottom five floors of Central Park Tower will be occupied by Nordstrom Shop, which will become Nordstrom's flagship store in Manhattan. It has agreed to be the building's anchor tenant. 
The store spans seven stories, including two underground levels and totals 285,000 square feet. The tower's residential amenities will be located on floors 8 through 18 and will include a 60-foot indoor lab pool on the 14th floor as part of the 15,000 square foot outdoor terrace, a 63-foot indoor pool on the 16th floor, a spa treatment center, saunas and jacuzzis, and a screening and game room. On the 100th floor, there will be a big dining room, cigar room, and lounge for events. And finally, number 1. One World Trade Center of 1,776 feet One World Trade Center's 18-piece spires rises to 1,776 feet, a direct tribute to the year the Declaration of Independence was penned. One World Trade Center was planned with entrances on all four sides of the building to seamlessly combine visitor and office tenant activity. The footprint of the cubic base is identical to that of the original Twin Towers. More than 2,000 pieces of glittering prismatic glass cover the base's surface. The 69-story tower's edges are chamfered back to form eight isosceles triangles, with the perfect octagon in the center. It all comes together at the crown with a square glass parapet, whose crystalline design creates a dynamic effect as light refracts like a kaleidoscope throughout the day. An initial estimate from February 2007 indicated that the tower could cost around 3 billion US dollars or $1,150 per square foot. The cost had risen to $3.9 billion by April 2012, making it the most costly skyscraper in the world at the time. So, what are your thoughts about the top 10 tallest buildings in New York as of 2022? Which among them is your favorite? Would you spend your time visiting them? Let me know your answers in the comments below. Well, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to be updated whenever we post new videos. If you want more of this, you can always check out our other videos by visiting our channel. As always, this is the Lugs Luxury Channel. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.